was really important to have this session here today, you know, just to come here and give the people of Marvel a bit more information about direct provision, to share our experiences of what life in direct provision is like on a day-to-day -day basis, what life is like for children, but also to share with them the kind of supports that we feel we would have benefited from had we had more people being supportive in the communities the time we came into the centres. So it was just to kind of encourage the people here in Marville to be more aware of what the direct provision is and what it entails and how they can best support the people that will be coming to live here. Honestly, it's amazing. I love how the community came together and worked a plan to secure the future for this direct provision. I also love the way they came and have all the ideas and all the questions they were asking, the comments, which makes sense. We wish we had that opportunity to have been asked and to be felt welcome. And with Moville and the community, the way they're going on, I know we have a hope for the future in direct provision. And thank you so much. <laughs> really glad to have given people in the community in Moville the chance to hear the testimony of people who are enduring the system of trek provision of accommodation for asylum seekers in Ireland. The most important thing for me is for people to realise, as Donna said, there is nothing criminal about seeking asylum. It's actually a human right. It's not something that you should be penalised for or your life made difficult on account of it. And yet, there's a kind of an underlying assumption in the whole direct provision system that it's somehow OK or excusable or even responsible governance to do that to people. Under no circumstances is it. When people see and can look into the eyes of the people who are actually talking about what they're going through, that makes an enormous difference to perceptions and depth of understanding so that people connect with it from the heart as well as intellectually. One of the main kind of special traits of a direct provision in Moville is that it's so far from Dublin where people will have to travel to do their interview. It's called the IPO, the International Protection Office. Those interviews take place in Mount Street in Dublin. And I've driven a few people from Sligo down to do their interview. People are petrified before they do that interview for the very good reason that it's so important for the rest of their lives. If people from Moville will have to travel, as far as I understand it, through Sligo, to Dublin because there isn't clarity about whether they're able to go through Northern Ireland. To be honest, if I was going for an interview, I wouldn't take the risk. I would go uh, via Sligo and Dan. So that's a momentous journey for anybody to undertake. There are no guarantees of proper procedures in place by the RIA, the Reception and Integration Agency, to make sure that that's possible. What we're hoping to do now is to try to generate a community-driven mechanism that will offer, if you like, safe passage for people from Moville to Dublin and back for the purposes of their international protection interview. They are guaranteed that right under the Geneva Convention, and yet it's just habitually made difficult for them by the system that we've let happen here. So I think there's a real urgency to challenge that culture of deliberate negligence, a low intensity harassment all the time by the state of people who have entitlements and rights. I think it went really well. We had a really good turnout. The people who came wanted to know more about direct provision and they want to get involved in trying to raise awareness and also to show solidarity and support and love to people who are being held, because that's the word I'd use, held in direct provision in Ireland. When people understand what those who are being held in direct provision are going through and they realise they're suffering and they realise that the human beings like us, which is stating the obvious, then they respond with heart. This is a great opportunity for us to become a more compassionate society in Ireland. We are the land of Cade Mula Falchi and we are a very welcoming people and this is actually a chance to even increase that. It would be amazing to see more of this around the different towns in Ireland because then we can start to really show the government how unsuitable the system of direct provision is and how we don't need reform of the system but we need the system to be totally abolished because it's not suitable 
at all, but it's also important so that people can easily integrate into their communities and can easily pick up where they left off their lives, say, at home, but to be able to come into this new community, carry on with their lives and be able to contribute in the communities. I think what would really help is for people to get involved in the campaigns. For example, the right to work campaign is still ongoing. We're still asking for a meaningful right to work that does not discriminate and is not restrictive, one that entitles everyone to be able to work and also for for people to get involved in the end direct provision campaign. No one wants to live comfortably in direct provision. People want to be able to live normal lives and normal households and bring up their children in normal environments. No institutionalized living. We don't want any deportations. And by helping out I don't mean in terms of charity or donations, but creating welcoming environments in their communities creating job opportunities for people that have the permits to work, creating voluntary opportunities, just engaging a bit more with the people so that people feel more welcome in the community.